Well, the United States has vetoed a U.N. resolution that would have raised the status of Palestinians from a non-observer state to full membership. The move has been slammed by the Palestinian Authority. Meantime, in Israel, fear is growing within a small sector of society opposed to Israel's official stance on the Palestinian issue and the Gaza war. Sarah Coates says more from Jerusalem. Spitting, screaming, telling him to die. This is a video shot by bystanders showing how 62-year-old history and civics teacher Dr. Meir Baruchin was received by some of his students. That schoolyard reaction came days after Dr. Baruchin posted on Facebook about Palestinian casualties in Gaza. Meet Lubna Olyan, 14 years old. Play the violin. She doesn't exist anymore. She won't be playing no more. Most Jews don't care. Most Israelis, uh, the Palestinians, are nothing more than a vague image. They have no name, no face, no family, no hope, no plans. So I'm trying to humanize the, the Palestinians. Meir was subsequently dismissed from his position after the Jerusalem municipality filed a complaint. Meir was then arrested, accused of sedition and incitement. The general attorney said there's no sedition and incitement in my Facebook post. So the police decided to interrogate me for two other charges. One, intention to commit an act of treason against the state of Israel. Two, intention to disrupt public order. The minute I walked into the police station, they kept my hands and legs. Authorities then searched Meir's home looking for evidence. He says they didn't find anything. Still, Meir was transported back to the station as police interrogated him again. The second part of the interrogation was not asking questions. It was more of a rhetoric. When you install the answer inside the question, you don't let the other person choose his answer. Those were leading questions. They tried to put words in my mouth. Meir was then held in solitary confinement for four days and classified as a high-risk prisoner. As Meir fought his dismissal in court, his supporters rallied outside and ended up being pushed and shoved by police. Meir eventually won his unfair dismissal case. He's going back to school and says he'll continue to educate his students about the Palestinians. Most students, ever since they are born, they get to hear only one voice. They think all the same way. You cannot have a, a, a democratic dialogue when everybody think the same way and speak in one voice. The government maintains Israel remains a democracy, the only one in the Middle East, as often touted by Israeli leaders, including Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. We are a strong, vibrant democracy, and I'm sure that you guys have been covering, you know, in the uh, over the past year, how uh, uh, fierce our uh, political uh, democratic debates are taking place in our country. Um, but uh, we are a united democracy right now from all across the political spectrum. Most Israelis I've spoken to about this were happy to share their views off camera, but declined to go public out of fear of retribution. The fear is not unfounded. In February, the documentary No Other Land, an Israeli-Palestinian co-production on the expulsion of Palestinians from their village by Israel, won the Berlinale Documentary Award. And in his acceptance speech, its Israeli creator spoke out about inequality between Israelis and Palestinians. I'm living under a civilian law and Basel is under military law. He was criticised for those comments and says he's even received death threats. CNA's attempts to speak to the documentary's producers since have gone unanswered. Yeriv Oppenheimer is a peace activist in Israel. Previously, the director of the well-known anti-occupation NGO Peace Now, he echoes what many we spoke to are too afraid to say openly. It's a catastrophe for the future of this region, a real catastrophe. They are taking advantage of the war in order to gain more land in the West Bank. He says the Israeli government is taking advantage of the war to annex more Palestinian land in the West Bank, which will make it almost impossible to have a future peace agreement with the Palestinians. 
So people don't know about it, they don't care so much about it. And if there's someone that show them the, the, in the mirror the ugly face of the occupation, they prefer to break the mirror than to look at it and to say, OK, we need to fix it. The government denies that it's clamping down on those not towing the official line. Every person uh, whom you're going to speak to in Israel will tell you that we are committed to freedom of speech, freedom of press. Um, so it's not something that I'm familiar with. As Israel comes under increasing criticism for its conduct in Gaza, more and more people are coming forward, adding their voices to the few that stand up, demanding change. But for now, the search for any middle ground on a divisive conflict remains an elusive one. Sarah Coates, CNA, Israel.